hello guys welcome to my channel and in today's video we are going to learn how can we do salesforce deployments using azure devops now i'm assuming you guys are here because you either don't have much knowledge on azure devops or salesforce deployment or both of them so this is the right place right uh, video uh, for you guys and let's explore how can we work on them so I have divided this series into three parts and uh, this is the first of them as the videos were be becoming quite long. So make sure you follow all the three parts uh, to have the entire process set up. Now, if you already have an account in Azure DevOps, you can simply log in and work on the project. If there is already a project created by your client and you are working on top of it and if you guys uh, just want to do a demo and the learning purpose, what you can do is you can go to this website i'll provide in the description and you can create a demo uh, azure devops project and you can work on all the things which we are working now so i've already created a video on how we can sign up for azure devops using this github option i'll provide that in the description as well and uh, right now i have already since i've already logged in I will start off with it and make sure you follow all the steps uh, as and when I keep on doing them and all the links and values which you need to provide I'll be providing in the description. So let's get started. I'll name this as Salesforce CI CD Azure and provide a description test so once you have provided these details okay we can provide a slash in the project name uh, this is a demo project so i don't have the privilege to create a public project anyway all the projects which your client might have already created or provided you to work on will be private otherwise everyone in the internet will be able to see so let's click on create project and we are in so this is the name of the project which we created just now there are a bunch of settings azure boards which is similar to jira there is repo which is a git repo where our code will be pushed this is a version control tool then there is pipelines which we can define this is exactly similar to any other pipeline out there in the market like jenkins then there is test plans which which you can define and there are artifacts so we'll be more concerned about only these two this is more than enough to set up sales for ci cd deployments so let's get started our next step will be to set up the repo now in our repo we'll have our sfdx code base and uh, whatever metadata we have developed till now in the project or if it's an existing project so i'll walk you through how can we do that click on repos and here you can clone the repo in your local machine so you can either either copy this url or if you click on clone on vs code if you have vs code it will uh, clone in in your local vs code so what i'll do is i prefer using github desktop that's my preference you guys can use github desktop you can use uh, vs code you can use source tree whatever works for you so now once i have opened github desktop i'll copy this url make sure it's it's https one which you copy and in github desktop there is an option to add and click on clone repository once you do that uh, select the last option which is url and this is the local path in your machine where it will clone so i'll click on clone and it will ask me for the credential now 
you might be wondering where the credential is or what it is you don't have to remember anything just click on generate quick credentials copy this username copy this password and in future also if it is asking you for username and password it might happen like after a month it is asking you can always come here you can click on repos and click on generate kit credential and it will give in it will give you a fresh set of username and password so let's go back to my azure uh, i mean github desktop so we can see it has cloned the repo and in my repo there is only one branch which is main and if i click on show in explorer you can see it's an empty branch so yeah, we now want to set up the code in this. Now, as we move to the next step, there has to be a very important key consideration or decision which we have to make. Option number one, if your project is already live and you are doing this setup for the first time, you will need the code which is which has already gone live to be in the repo so that you are working on top of the latest changes so in that case what you will do is you will generate a package.xml take an extract through vs code and push it into the repo and the consideration number two will be if it is a new project you are starting from scratch your project is in first sprint uh, out of or it could be in second sprint and this is the first time you're setting up the devops process what you have to do is you have to take make a package.xml for all the components which you have worked till now and consolidate take an extract and put it into the repo so uh, let's assume that uh, your project is a new one there is still no code into the production what we'll do is okay so if you are having a production or already we'll use a tool called packagebuilder.heroku.com i'll provide the url as well where you can select a kind of environment if it is a production from where you want to take the code because you know as you as you already have code in production you can select this or if it is your second option where uh, you know certain level of development has done you can select the sandbox and authorize the dev work so <clears throat> for now it's a training instance for me i'll select as production it's asking for credential i'll log in And I'll select the option as exclude managed. What it will do is, is it will exclude all the managed package components and click on get components. So what it will do is this tool helps me create a package.xml of all the contents, which is of all the metadata, which is present in our Salesforce org. Now, once you have a consolidated package.xml, you can always select certain number of components Take an extract and put it into the branch. Hello, test, test, test. So after waiting for a good two to three minutes, I have got the package.xml of my entire org. So it depends on how many components it has. It took me three minutes. It can take you 10 minutes, depending on the number of components. So I'll copy this entire thing, put it in notepad and only keep the things okay let me change the language as XML. i don't want all these animation rules i can keep the apex classes apex page as well i'll keep so it all depends on what you want to keep in your repo you can't keep everything right uh, there is a limit of 10,000 components uh, in salesforce if you are deploying more than that it won't deploy so make sure you don't cross that limit try to have a smaller 
number of components so that deployments each and every round of deployment happens quickly so i'll remove this as well keep order most of the things i'll remove custom So yeah, after going through the entire package.xml, I have made a small smaller package than what it generated. I'll copy it and in your VS code where it is connected to the org from where you want to take the extract. So if your approach is number one, uh, where there's already code in production, you should connect your VS code to your production and if it is a development org uh, as the second approach that uh, already development has just started it's in first sprint or second sprint and you're doing the devops setup for the first time then in that kind of case you can just connect your dev org to vs code so the objective is to get the metadata retrieval from the, those orgs of the package.xml which we generated so I'll save it and right click and click on retrieve source in manifest from org. What it will do is it will take the extract of metadata in version 55 from the Salesforce org. So it ran for around one minute and we have it is showing that retrieve source from org successfully ran, which is always a good news. I mean there is no there won't be any problem in that now let's so once you click on initialize the repo with readme file you will be able to see this screen now if i click on branches it will show only there is main branch now what I want to do is, according to your branching strategy, you have to define this part. What I'll do right now is I'll create a branch from main called test. So click on new branch. It should be based on main. So depending on your branching strategy, you can define the entire structure here. Name of my branch is test and I'll click on create. This is an option to select any board items which you want to associate with this one. I don't want anything. I'll click on create. And you can see test branches already present. So once my branches are set, my next step will be to clone it. So click on repo and click on clone. Now you have an option to clone it in GitHub desktop. You can clone it in VS Code. You can directly do that. Good thing uh, is Azure and VS Code are both from Microsoft. And you can clone it in uh, Source Tree as well. So it is your preference. I personally prefer GitHub Desktop. So I'll copy this link. Go to my GitHub Desktop. Click on Add. And click on Clone Repository. I'll Select the last option of these three, paste it, and it is giving this error because this is an existing location. So I'll choose a different empty location. I and click on clone. all right it is cloned if it asks for a username or password which it might you can always click 
on generate git credential and it will generate a username and password you don't have to remember them at all you can always come and generate this grid credential and paste it here so okay uh, right now we are in the repository and what i'll do is i'll select the test branch so click on current branch and select as origin test then click on show in explorer so it has taken me to the location in my local where this test branch is there and right now what we have done is we have taken an extract of the entire code base so what i'll do is i'll right click here reveal in file explorer so in my vs code location this is my vs code location this is different from my repository location so this is entirely a sfdx folder structure so you can simply blindly copy this and paste it in your repository location so what it will do is it will not only have the project json files and the folder structure it will also have inside the four sub folder yeah inside the four sub folder you can see all the components which we have selected there is aura classes layouts objects pages triggers so yeah we have our code setup in the repo we are yet to push it so if I go to GitHub desktop, it will show me all the files as added. Mind you, these are the metadata files, be it fields, be it classes, everything. So some 2400 components. So yeah, I'll provide a commit as initial code commit. Click on commit. might take some time for the first time and click on push origin awesome so your test branch now has the initial code which we have set up right now so we have covered in part one till setting up the repository make sure you watch the part two and part three in this order so that you can have the entire end-to-end -end devops setup and i'll see you in the next video thank you